Hi everyone, I'm Shelly and you're watching There's No Place Like Home. On last month's Patreon video, I shared a nature study walk that my children and I took on a trail near our house. And I mentioned in that particular video that there was another trail that I liked better and that I would like to do a future Patreon video about that. And that is kind of what this one is today, this video. I did go on the other trail yesterday. Unfortunately, I didn't really get to record anything. I took lots of pictures, didn't record anything though, because my, my three daughters are the ones that went with me, my nine, um, 11 and 12 year olds, but they took a friend with them. So I didn't feel comfortable recording while she was there. So I decided to do more of like a slideshow of, of what we did. And we also didn't really walk very far yesterday because we got sidetracked by what you will soon see. Um, so yeah, I, I am planning on still doing an actual nature setter study video on this trail because it is fascinating, but you know what? These pictures are a great example of how we do nature study because I know that a lot of people who do nature study or who are looking into nature study um, are think of it as more of a structured thing. And it can be for some children. Some children take nature study journals with them. Some children have notebooking pages that they fill out either before, during, or after their nature study, or they may have specific things that they're looking for. And with us, when we go on a nature study, it really is just to take in the world around us. And what we do learn comes about very spontaneously or kind of just in impromptu conversations that I have with my children. And yeah, I do talk about a lot of the question, the narrative stuff with my kids, um, even even my nine, 11 and 12 year olds, not everything, because a lot of it would just be over their heads. But I'll, I'll explain some of it that we do talk about here. So this is the beginning of the trail. And this is actually by a nature center, which is about five minutes from my house. So I'm very blessed to live in a very beautiful area. Um, but this is the beginning of the trail that we were on, not the beginning, beginning, I should say the beginning of the portion that we took because it's a very long trail. It's called the DNL trail and it stretches for just miles and miles and miles and miles. But anyway, so what you will see here is this is actually a mountain. It doesn't look very big in the photo, but it is, it is pretty high. And what you will notice here is that this mountain is, is just covered in rocks. And this is something that you will notice in a lot of the photos that I show you about the mountains in our area. And what I always thought to myself as I was, as I, I, as I look at the mountains around us is that our mountains around here, at least a lot of them don't look like what you would think of as mountains. They look like rubble piles from um, mines. So here, you can't really see very well here, but this is, is an actual rubble pile from a coal mine that I drove past today. So I pulled over to the side of the road and I had my daughter take a picture of it. Unfortunately, it's really grown out, so you can't see it very well. But you will see that there, there are rubble piles in these mines. So while this is just, you know, like it, it's a large hill, but is by no means a mountain, what you will see in the other ones that I show you, yes, they are classified as mountains. Some of them are actually part of the Appalachian Trail. And my guess is that a lot of these may actually be related to mines. And there actually are a lot of um, mineral rich areas in the area that I live in. I know that in particular, they mine slate where I live because that's where the underground tunnels um, came about. Here, I'll switch to another one just so you have something else to look at. Um, so we have, we have slate mines underneath our, our town. They're are also zinc mines that are still in operation. And I think in one of the photos that I show you, you'll be able to see a red hill that is actually a spoil tip, which is something, which is also an artificially created mountain or, or hill from mining. And again, so I, I don't know, it's just a, a hypothesis that I have. And I was saying to my older daughter that these these mountains would be huge for humans to to be mining and coming up with piles like that. And that is where the whole um, theory of giants comes in. So what you see here is this is a rock, they say, on the trail. And if you look very closely, it looks to me like a piece of petrified wood. And yeah, I believe that many of the things that we look at as rocks are petrified wood and not rocks. 
And so here, this is just a sensory garden that is at the nature center that my children were able to take part in. And I didn't even know that, that the sensory garden was there. I'm actually wondering if it's new because I had never seen it before. They have some deer bones for, for the children to look at. And yeah, so this, this video really is a combination of questioning the narrative, but it's also, again, an example of how we go about doing nature study in our homeschool. We're actually on summer break right now. But I count every day as a school day because this nature study doesn't look any different from the nature studies that we take throughout the year. This here is another um, supposed rock that, if you ask me, looks like a giant log that is on the trail. And you will notice that a lot of the, the rocks that we see, the formations, do look very similar to, to petrified wood. This is just a nice view of where we were at. Very peaceful. So many questions that my girls had while we were along the way. Another rock that I always look at and think, okay, yeah, that too looks like petrified wood. Could it be? I think there's a very good chance that it could be. Um, so that's just the girls. They were wading in the water there. This was before they discovered, well, what we see coming up very shortly. <laughs> I know that the suspense, when we get to it, you're going to be like, really? that That's what she was making us wait for? Well, yeah, because... My children found it exciting, so maybe some of you will. <laughs> but anyway, so again, more rock formations that I think look a whole lot like petrified wood. And you will see that a lot of it is charred. And I'm told that that is from a forest fire that happened a while back. So and there's some more that looks a lot like wood, and that, one, that piece is also very charred. Another interesting thing that I do have to say, though, about them saying that that is charred wood from a forest fire is that further down the path, there is a whole area that is completely barren of trees because a forest fire did sweep through there. And you can tell that a forest fire swept through there because the few trees that are left standing there have like nothing on them. They're dead. So I find it interesting that this, these supposedly were, were charred in a forest fire, yet the vegetation is completely grown out. So I don't know, could it have been from something else? I don't know. Maybe. And these are all questions that I bring about with my children, too. I bring them up to them. What do you think this could have been from? Here's another one. You see it's charred right on the end, but not down here towards the base. And here is one of the mountains. It's across the river. So this is the Lehigh River right here. And this is across. And as you can see, that's another mountain. It's very high. You can't tell from the photo, but it's very high. Um, I believe down here is where the highway is. And it, it does, to me, look a lot like just discarded rocks from mining and not like what you would consider as a typical mountain. So here is where we were just kind of on the banks of the river. The girls were searching through. And that's what we do during our nature study is I just let them look. I don't tell them what I want them to do. We just discover things. If they see something interesting, they show it to me. If I see something interesting, I show it to them. Um, I still use the app Seek. It doesn't always tell me exactly what the plants and insects are. I hope I can find a better one. But this is all just about asking questions, discovering, and seeing what, what it is that we can find while we're outside. This is just them going down the path till we get to the bank of the river. And down here is where they were. Okay, so right here, actually, this is the, this is the road. This is the highway here. And the mountain goes up even higher than that. We actually hiked that. For, for quite a while, um, a few months ago. And that's part of the Appalachian Trail. So this is what they found. Ta-da! No, it was just, it was tadpoles, a bunch of them. And they wanted to bring them home, but we didn't have a container to put them in. And honestly, I didn't want to bring them home anyway. It did spark a lot of questions though. Like the girls asked, what do, do, do tadpoles, they, do they have to breathe air? And so I didn't know that off the top of my head. So I Googled it and found out that tadpoles do have gills, but that they develop lungs and that a lot of them pop up to the surface for, to breathe. And I, they also asked me, what do tadpoles eat? So we looked that up too and found out that they start out eating algae and other plants like that. And then they move on to smaller insects. And so 
just impromptu learning like this sparks a lot of questions and they're things that they're going to remember because they're the ones that asked them because they were genuinely interested. And so they were so excited to find just so many areas with tons of tadpoles. So these are all tadpoles in there. And just another view of where we were at. And as you can see, even though this is more of the rocky mountainside here, and you can see kind of the gravelly look here, it, it, it does get vegetation on it, obviously, but that's, that's to be expected. Now this section here, I always thought looked like it could possibly have, have once been wood. And I just love to think about these things as we're out there. And they're just collecting some tadpoles here on the banks. Another look at what I believe to be maybe discarded mining. Could it really be a mountain? Sure, it could be. But to me, it doesn't look a whole lot like, like other mountains. I don't know. I know the mountains can be made of different things, but there's an uncanny resemblance between that and what we see at the mines. And since we do live in an area that is mineral rich, I, I, it doesn't surprise me at all to, to know that there could have been mining done thousands of years ago here by, you know, people much, much bigger than we are. Am I saying that's an absolute fact? No. Um, and I actually, I don't even think I brought up the giant aspect with, with, with my, with my girls that were here, just because I think with my older kids, I can discuss it with them because they, they know that it's kind of a debate. We don't really know for sure, but with them, you know, I, I kind of shy away of talking about too much stuff like that for the time being, just because I don't want them to go to other people and say, my mom said that giants built that mountain because that's not what I'm saying. But anyway, yeah, but I do tell them that I think it had something to do with mining and that I don't think it's a, a natural mountain formation. Just another view. This is the red hill that I was telling you about. Now, this one is a spoil tip. So you can see it has a reddish color. There's a really big house on top of it with a guest house, but that actually, I talked about this in another video, I found out that there are, there are said to be tunnels in the hill underneath the house and a little exit door at the bottom somewhere. But anyway, so this, this is the, the a spoil tip from a zinc mine, and that's why the, the hill is red. So it's not unheard of that, obviously it's not as high as the mountains, but it's not unheard of for that sort of thing to happen. And that's just another good Good look at the Red Hill. And some more of the tadpoles that we found. And we found that the tadpoles in various states, um, some of them didn't have any limb buds at all. Some of them had limb buds. Some of them had very obvious little, little feet. Um, and then others, really were taking on the, the frog look, but still had the tail. And that really sparked a neat conversation about metamorphosis. Again, not planned at all. We didn't know what we were going to find. Um, these are just some more rock formations that I always found to be interesting. And I just, I always keep in mind as I'm out on these trails, thinking to myself, okay, let, let's, let's look for petrified wood or let's look for what, what could possibly be melted brick. And, you know, those are, to me, that just makes the world so much of a more interesting place when we know that we haven't been told everything. And as frustrating as it is, I, I think that I like the mystery also. Just some more rocks that look like that. <laughs> These are my daughter's footprints. I, I also talked to them about grounding, how important it is to just walk barefoot on, on the earth sometimes and just ground yourself. It is, it's so good for you. And here is a little frog or toad. I'm not sure. Maybe a toad. I think it looks more like a toad. But anyway, that we found. And as you can see, like it barely has its, its tail anymore. And these were all over the place and they're camouflaged so well that you could barely even see them up on the bank because they were the exact same color as the mud. But 
anyway, that is really what a typical unit study, not sorry, unit study, I've got unit studies on the brain. That's what, what a typical nature study looks like in, in our homeschool. We don't, you know, really plan anything out. We don't go there with specific expectations of what's going to happen. We just open our eyes, take in what we see around us, and we just go from there. That's all that I have for you today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and would like to hear more of what I have to say, I would love if you would do that. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave one either here or over on Instagram. And if you like my work and would like to check out my Patreon page, I will leave a link in the description box for that as well. And I hope you have a great day.